Hello and welcome back to the Fortis in Unitate Cataclysm Dungeon Guide. My name is Bodhisattva and today I will be discussing the Stone Core. The Stone Core is located in Deep Home, which is actually beneath the Maelstorm. Yeah, that big swirly looking thing we've always seen traveling over the Great Sea by boat and zeppelin? That's it. Once you're in Deep Home, the instance itself can be accessed via the western side of the Temple of Earth. But first, in order to get to the Maelstrom, you need to pick up the quest, The Eye of the Storm, in Orgamar. The quest starting NPC is Farseer Krogar. He can be found on the new Zeppelin platform in Orgamar. Once the quest is completed, players may access the Maelstrom through one of these curious looking runestones, also in Orgamar proper. Once transported, you will see our old friend Thrall. Speak to him and be transported to Deepholm. And hang on, it's a wild ride. Upon your arrival in Deepholm, Boomkins, Trees, Malay DPS, Hunters, and Rogues will be particularly interested in seeing Therizane and picking up the Wayward Child. Also, make sure you get Twilight documents from Earthwarden Yashara. This quest item will drop from Millhouse Manastorm. I will discuss him momentarily. Return the documents to Yashara to get followers and leaders to profit from the following quest rewards. At the beginning of the Stone Core, you will encounter Millhouse Manastorm. In this encounter, he is a hostile and will run to join the regular trash mobs found before the first boss. In order to get him out of the way and not interfering in the trash clearing, you must DPS him down to 5% before he will move on to the next group of trash. It's important to take care of him first as he fears and does a blast AoE that makes clearing trash very difficult. The first encounter of the dungeon is Corboros. Corboros has two phases, a surface phase, a veritable tank and spank, and a burrowing phase. The second phase is the one of which you want to be most wary. During this time, he will do a Dust Cloud AoE that hits for about 25k per tick, akin to standing in fire, and he spawns adds that must be AoE'd down. Repeat the two phase cycle until Corboros dies. After Corboros, the party will want to be wary of three other features leading up to the second boss in the Stone Core the rock elementals who will emit red beams and pillars of light from the ground around them, another don't stand in the fire mechanic, two, the groups of rock borers who, if not AoE'd down in a timely fashion, will increasingly do more damage the longer they are left alive, and three, the gauntlet right before the slab hide encounter that is virtually identical to the gauntlet at the end of Pit of Saron. The only difference is, instead of white AoE targets appearing on the ground and chunks of ice falling on your head, Black circles appear here, and stalagmites fall on your head. After the gauntlet event is Slab Hide. Slab Hide is a dragonkin with, of course, breath abilities and a tail swipe. He has two phases, a ground phase and an air phase. The ground phase is a straight tank and spank. During the air phase, however, more black circles will appear and stalagmites will fall. Only this time, the stalagmites stick around for a bit of time causing line of sight issues for all party members. As well, lava pools will be forming at the party's feet during this part of the encounter. After Slab Hide, watch the patrolling ogres. They behave like the ogres in Grohl's Lair, and it appears as if the party needs to be stacking on these, which is not happening here, or you'll get jumped and knocked back. Orzruk is rumored to be one of the toughest encounters in the Stone Core, so let's take his abilities one by one in order to form our strategy. First of all is Ground Slam. Ground Slam has a 4 second cast time and all party members, including the tank, need to be at least 8 feet away from Orzruk, or sustain an 80 to 90k hit. But being this distance will not free you from the effects of Orzruk's Ground Slam totally. The closer the party is to the boss, the more damage you will take, and the further back the slam will punch you across the room. Secondly is Shatter. Shatter is a miniature ground slam, only with no AoE effect. It will only affect the melee and tank, but affect them to the tune of 28k to 30k damage after a 2.5 second cast. Between this and the ground slam, Squishy Melee may not have time to retreat from this effect. The healer needs to be on his toes. Third is the Elementium Bulwark. 
This ability acts as a shield on Orzrek and is a random instant cast. It has a 10 second duration and while active has a 20% chance to reflect any spells. It may be wise to stop magical abilities if the spell reflect ability occurs. And finally, just for kicks, Orzrek enrages at 30% health, increasing his damage by 50%. Good luck and have fun. After Orzruk, a couple more Grohl type ogre pulls and we're to the final encounter, High Priestess Azeel. As you approach her stage, you will see three sets of her devotees, 101 in all. These mobs can be either pulled one group at a time, or all three can be engaged at once. After defeating her devoted followers, Azeel will attack the party in two phases, a ground phase, which is like the other encounters, almost a tank and spank, save her cast of Curse of Blood, which will require some healing. The other portion of the encounter is a levitation phase. As she enters this phase, she will cast Energy Shield, which will do slight damage to the melee and tank as it will levitate her into the air. Once in the air and out of harm's way, Azeel will summon adds with which the party must contend. While the party is battling adds, Azeel will cast Force Grip, which begins to appear like a void zone of sorts, similar to the models used in, say, Obsidian Sanctum on the Drake encounters. This will pull members up toward Azeel, into the air, and slam them back down on the ground. Needless to say, that's gotta hurt. She also will be randomly casting Gravity Well at the party. It appears that if a party member is near the splash damage of one of these wells, it will draw him into it and begin to deal damage to said party member, pursuant to how close they are to the middle of the well. The answer, it seems, is to flee as quickly as possible away from these gravity wells. Finally, Azeel will randomly target one party member with Seismic Shard. This ability is reminiscent of Forge Master Garfrost's Throw Serenite ability, except anyone hit with it will sustain 32 to 37k damage so avoiding it with everything else that's happening will be critical. Thank you for watching Fortis in Unitate's Cataclysm Dungeon Guide to the Stone Core. As always, feel free to comment, ask questions, or correct anything offered here.